Um, well, good morning. Um, it is Fashion Week. Uh, I know you can tell that. You just have to look at me. I really try to uh, wear a different one of my all the same color suits today so that you would know. Uh, this semi-annual event really is an incredible time of the year for New York City. It's great for our economy and it's great for uh, New Yorkers to understand we are the fashion capital of the world. Uh, the buzz it help cre creates helps underscore our city's reputation as a cutting edge capital of fashion, home to more than double the number of fashion companies in Paris, and uh, the hundreds of thousands of jobs that it attracts, many from out of town, generate a lot of extra business for our hotels, restaurants, and stores at a time when they really need it. In fact, today I am pleased to announce that based on new data from the city's Economic Development Corporation, Fashion Week's two events this year will produce a record economic impact of $865 million. You're going to be able to justify that number when I ask you? $865 million. Just think about that. And this success is growing the fashion industry, just like our success in growing tourism, film, and TV, and digital media. It's really one of the big reasons why New York City is weathering the economic downturn better than many parts of the rest of the country. Uh, one of our great strengths is uh, the fashion industry, which today employs 173,000 173, people and generates nearly $10 billion in wages. And that has always been its spirit of entrepreneurship that really has made the difference. And that's something we support and encourage in every economic sector, from digital tech to food preparation. Uh, a number of you have been with us at incubators in both of those industries, and uh, this is another one in the series. And that's because we think that small businesses are the backbone of our city, and there's no doubt that entrepreneurs and jobs they create are what will drive our city's economic recovery in the months ahead. So we're doing everything we can to help more startups take root, especially in the fashion industry, and that's what we want to discuss today. Back in 2010, our city's Economic Development Corporation embarked on a comprehensive study of the fashion industry, and the result is our Fashion NYC 2020 plan, uh, six initiatives designed to grow the industry and enhance our position as a global leader. And today we're launching one of those initiatives. It is a mini MBA program called Design Entrepreneurs NYC, uh, created in partnership with the Fashion Institute of Technology. It's a free classroom style program that will give New York City based fashion designers the training they need to run our own labels, to run their own labels. Classes will be taught by FIT faculty and other industry professionals and will focus on topics like business marketing, operations, and financial management. And at the end of the program, the <coughs> participant will write and refine their business plans with the help of experts in the industry, and then receive valuable feedback on their plans from a panel of influential fashion leaders. Uh, the program, which begins in June, is being supported by $60,000 in funding from EBC, and there's space for up to 35 designers and applications which are due by the end of March can be submitted by visiting EDC's website at nyc.gov. And while I will need a job in another close to two years, um, this is not where my talents lie, so I will not be one of the competitors for those 35 positions. Uh, seriously, the other five elements of our Fashion NYC 2012 plan are also moving forward. For instance, number two of six later this year will kick off a competition to find and support New York City's most innovative fashion retailers and to help accelerate their businesses. The winners will receive prizes such as temporary retail space to open a pop-up store, marketing and PR support, and business mentors. Another part of the initiative, number three, we're going to create a fund to provide loans for emerging designers who often struggle to raise enough capital to meet their first production orders. And that makes this fund even, what makes this fund even more significant is that one of the requirements for receiving money is that the recipients must use local manufacturers. So this initiative will actually support two elements of the fashion industry. We also want to promote the business side of the fashion industry, which doesn't get the same kind of exposure as the design side. And to that end, number four is creating a fellowship program for rising stars in fashion management. 
uh, fellows can be connected to mentors and educational and networking opportunities to guide them through the next phase of their careers. And working with Parsons, the new school for design, number five, is will sow the seeds for the next generation of fashion leaders by reaching out to interns and college students. And over one weekend in July, we organize the, uh, we will organize lectures, panels, discussions, and working uh, network event, networking events for some 200 summit interns. Uh, it was a very successful event that we did before, and we plan to do it again this summer in partnership with Parsons. We're also, number six, establishing a job placement program to draw top business-minded college seniors into the industry. And the response to that program has just been incredible. We received more than 350 applications for just 25 spots. Now, if you think about it, that would make us one of the most uh, selective programs in anything in this country. Uh, it's really hard to get a job in this industry. A lot of people want to be there. And later this week, those 25 participants, most of whom are from out of town, will interview with companies like Macy's, Theory, Guilt Group, and LFUSA. And representatives of some of those country companies are with us today, and I want to thank them for partnering with us. I'd also like to mention one more way that we are supporting the industry, and I think it's especially relevant considering we're standing right in the middle of it, and that is our fashion incubator located here in the heart of the garment district where top emerging designers can rent space at well below market rates and receive valuable mentorship from industry experts. Now, incubators, as I said before, are a big part of our strategy to help entrepreneurs in every industry launch their businesses here in New York City. And we established our fashion incubator back in 2010 along with Dion von Furstenberg and the Council of Fashion Designers of America, or CFDA, which I'm happy to say celebrates its 50th anniversary this week. Uh, the incubator's inaugural tenants are about to graduate from their two-year residency and strike out on their own. And thanks to the in-depth curriculum at the CFDA that they provided, as well as mentoring and educational and networking events, we have no doubt that these designers are well equipped for the future. In fact, many of them are showing their designs during this fashion week some of them even at Lincoln Center. And the CFDA has already selected the incubator's next class of designers, some of whom are here in this room today. Now, one of the most interesting <coughs> points about the incubator's current class of tenants is its diversity. More than half the designers are from other countries, and they are the ones who will be creating the next waves of jobs in our fashion industry. And that's a common theme throughout the fashion industry and throughout all of our industries which is why we have to continue to do everything that we can to make it easier for immigrants to come and work here in America. Our design schools and our fashion houses attract top talent from all around the world. We've just got to make sure that they choose to stay in New York after they graduate and start their own businesses and create more jobs for New Yorkers. So on that note, I wanted to thank Newmark Knight Frank, who's the landlord here, uh, and the CFDA for hosting us during this extremely busy time of the year. Uh, they are fantastic presidents. Uh, president, one of the women who I think is the most glamorous in the city. <laughs> Diana accepted, I just want to go. But number two, uh, Gemma Furstenberg has been an incredible champion of our city's fashion industry. Um, she is a designer, she is a businesswoman. Uh, she is a style setter, and I'm um, happy to say uh, she yeah. is a very close personal friend. And if it wasn't for her husband, I'd be calling all the time, but I think I'm better not. Um, tell Diana, if it wasn't for her husband and Diana, I'd be doing that. All kidding aside, Diana, she's just a wonderful woman. You want to say something? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, uh, we're very lucky. This industry is very, New Yorkers, we are very lucky to have Mayor Bloomberg as a, as a mayor. And, uh, but the fashion industry is particularly very uh, lucky to have, to have him. I mean, he has been so supportive of our industry, which is the second industry in, in, in New York. Uh, today we are here to thank him, especially for this incubator program. And uh, I also want to thank Target and Newmark, Newmark Knight, our partner, for making this possible. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, 
Uh, CFDA believes that the garment industry uh, has a strong future and we look forward to sharing the results of our design trust made in Midtown study with the city uh, very soon. As I'm also a co-chair of Fashion 2020 and I was very pleased to participate in the city's effort to ensure the fashion industry's future in New York. As the president of the Council of Fashion Designers of America, I think it's beautiful to think about the future, but I think it's also nice to think about the past. And this year is 2012. We are celebrating the 50 years of the CFDA. And, uh, and uh, just to give you an idea wh wh how the CFDA was created, it was really created, there were really very, very talented designers uh, in, in America 50 years ago, but they weren't being recognized. They were being held in the back room of, uh, of 7th Avenue big firms. And that's when Eleanor Lambert and Women's Wear Daily, John Fairchild, decided that we had real talent in America and we had to give them exposure. And they pulled them out of the design room and uh, created the CFEA. So if you are interested in suing it and seeing the work that we have done, I encourage you to go to FIT. Uh, we have a beautiful exhibition. It started two days ago, and it is until April 17. And if you're lazy, you can buy the book, and you can buy it. It's called Impact. The, ex the exhibition is called Impact, because American fashion is about impact, because our mayor is an impactful ma uh, mayor, and because New York is impact. So thank you very much. Um, we are in the district of one of the most glamorous congressional members. Uh, she's also very smart. She also has brought home the bacon for New York time and time again. And we really do count on her, seriously, to stand up in Washington for New York's best interests. And she always has Carolyn Mullen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's, uh, it's so exciting. Fashion is so exciting, isn't it? Uh, glamorous uh, models, the, the fashion, the energy, it's uh, so New York. Uh, fashion is great business uh, for New York, and one thing that never goes out of fashion is good business practices. So that's why I'm so pleased to be here to endorse and support uh, the Mayor's initiative, the Fashion MBA. I think it is an absolutely great idea. And uh, this will help uh, our young designers and give them the tools and training they need to become successful business owners. And fashion is big business in our country and in our, in our city and state. It is a $350 billion industry in the United States. And it employs over 173,000 uh, New Yorkers and is growing with this incubator and other initiatives. New York is home for more than 800 fashion companies. That's more than double Paris. So we are the fashion capital. And we are, with these programs, going to be growing and expanding. And when you talk about the jobs in fashion that are directly related to the man manufacturing of apparel, the fashion industry also creates jobs in uh, many sectors, such as printing, uh, uh, transportation, distribution, publishing, advertising, publicity, merchandising, and retail. Uh, that is one of the reasons that I founded with the Jerry Nadler, and we are co-chairs and founders of the Fashion Caucus in uh, Congress, and we want to support this very important industry in any way. Uh, I got here early and was able to meet with many of the young designers. They are doing exciting, uh, really groundbreaking uh, work. Uh, I hope you get a chance to see their work and, and to talk to them. And, and it is, uh, Diane, we are, New York is so proud of you. Uh, she just had a great, big, successful show yesterday. Uh, but that's like that. <laughs> just like that. And, and, uh, and she's, uh, uh, what I really admire her is uh, her work to help others in the industry and to grow the industry, uh, to help our government expand jobs. And so she is a leader and the head of this uh, fashion um, a consortium, 2020 co-chairs it, and has done so much there. I must add that I have one bit of Diane Van Fostenberg dress, and it was my husband's favorite dress. I actually mm -hmm. now remember your picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, <did. laughs> and I, I, I was I, very proud of it. <laughs> Thank you. 
and Mr. Mayor, of all of, all of your initiatives, uh, the one that I admire the most after education is really the investment in future jobs for New York. It is so exciting to think of the importance of our fashion industry, to highlight it, to, to uh, foster it with this incubator, to come up with another set of many good ideas with this MBA program that is going to give the tools to our young fashion designers to grow and expand their businesses. It's so important. And the whole applied sciences, which is uh, such an exciting idea for the future of our great city and country. So I want to thank you for, for your energy and Seth Pinsky for your great work. Thank you.